in the last video, we managed our data source. Now let's get back to our report page by clicking this done button. And let us start building our report. Just note that the aim of this tutorial is to tell you about all the features of data studio. So the report we will make may not be aesthetically most pleasing report. At the end of the course, I'll show you some examples of beautiful reports and dashboards, but for now we'll focus on learning features only. So let's start. Let us first add a simple table, which will show the country wise count of total cases sorted in descending order. That is country with most number of cases will be at the top. To do this, we will first click on this button titled add a chart. Here we have three types of tables. Let's add the first one, which is a simple table. When I do this, it asks me to place the table first in the report. When I place it by clicking on the report, it tries to fill it automatically using the first dimension variable, which is countries in this data set and the first metric variable, which it has automatically judged to be the worldwide cases. Whenever we select a table or a chart on the report, we get the options for that element on the right side. So on the right, you can see that it is using our data source, COVID data sheet one. We haven't given any date range dimension because we don't have any in our data set. We will see the use of this date range later in some other example. Then comes dimension, which was correctly picked. It is countries because we want to see the country wise data. Then we select the metric we want to see against each country. We want to see the total number of cases in that country. It automatically picked up worldwide cases variable that I created in the last lecture. This also works, but the right variable to use here would be total cases variable that was already present in the data set. To use that variable, you have to click on this variable and here select the total cases variable. The table does not change because the previous variable was also doing the same thing, but this would be the right variable to use here. You can also add another column to this table. So to add a column of total deaths per country, you can pick up that field from the right and drop it in the add metric area. So you see the second column of total deaths for each country is also added. If you want to remove the added column, if you hover over that particular column, you'll see a small cross sign. If you click on it, that particular column will be removed. Then there is this option of optional metrics. If you switch it on, you can add optional metrics to your table or chart. Optional metrics will not be visible by default on the report, but a viewer will have this option of whether to view the metric or not. So let's add the total recovered variable as an optional metric. I'll show you how a viewer can view this metric. I added this in the optional metrics and it is not visible in the table on the left, but when this report is seen in the view mode, you'll see the option of viewing the optional metric. The next option is rows per page. On each page, currently it is showing hundred rows. So if you extend this table, below you will see the other rows. 
but since we want only the top 8 or 10 countries to be viewed on the first page we'll reduce the rows per page from 100 to 10 let's resize the table so that we see exactly 10 after this we have the summary row if you tick this checkbox you will get a summary of total of that metric which you have added I will not keep this here because I will highlight the total number of cases separately. So for now I will untick this. Then there are options of sorting the data. That is how you want to arrange the data. Right now by default it has sorted using the variable total cases in the descending order. In case you want to sort it in alphabetical order of the countries you have to change the variable here by clicking on it and selecting countries and changing it to ascending in this way your data will be sorted in alphabetical ascending order we'll set this back to the total cases in descending order because we want to see the top affected countries then there is this secondary sort secondary sort is used to tell the order if the variable in primary sort has same values well countries do not have same name but suppose these were name of person and you have more than one john in the data so among all the johns what will be the order so that second rule to sort when the first rule did not work is given in the secondary sort. We don't need a secondary sort in this table. Default date range will be used if we have a date time variable which will come in a later video. Then comes the option to filter data. If you have worked with tools like Excel or SQL, you know about it. But if you haven't, filtering data simply allows you to remove some data which you do not want to see according to some pre-given condition. For example, if in this table I do not want to see the first row which is USA, I can add a filter by clicking on this button, select exclude because I want to remove one value base is a condition condition is that if the country is USA so the condition is on the country variable and it country which is equal to USA be sure that you put USA in capitals because the text match that it does here is case sensitive. Now you can see that the record is filtered out because of the added condition. We can remove this filter also by clicking on this cross button. The last option here is the interactions option. This will be used later when we add other things to our report. All of this was part of the data tab. Data tab handles the content part of the table. Then there is the style tab, which handles the look and feel of the table or any other visualization, which we will discuss in the next video. So let's stop this video here. The task for you is to build this exact table and to also play around with all the options that we have discussed. A lot of these options will be repeated in most of the other charts that we will build in data studio. So don't get overwhelmed with them. You might think that you will not remember all of these, but trust me by the end of the course, you will have a strong intuition that 
what can and cannot be done in data studio and where to look if you want to do something and that's all that matters so see you in the next lecture